Hi everyone, this is Paul Schmutzler. Recently, Red Giant released the new version of their Universe set of plugins, and they're available now for After Effects and Premiere Pro. I got my hands on them and started working with them just in time for a project that was very graphics heavy, and there's some new features in Universe that made my job a lot easier. I'm gonna share those with you now. It saved me a ton of time, and it's perfect for those maybe that don't have the budget for a voiceover, and they need to put all of their instructions on screen in text. Text-heavy videos can be really bad unless the text looks good. So what I did was I used a little bit of graphic design expertise, combined it with Universe, and came up with a really snappy-looking set of titles that don't look like someone tried to make a video from PowerPoint. So in Premiere Pro, I have my timeline here. As you can see, all the purple or magenta-colored bars here are all graphics, so I've got several layers, and then the video track is just one. It's very simple. It was just a process. We needed to instruct people how to install this particular graphic onto glass in the right way, and we did it in three ways. We showed them the bad way, the terrible way to do it. We did the okay but not great way, and then finally we showed them the best way to do it. So we illustrated that with green for the best way, yellow with a little caution element here for the okay way, and then, of course, the red and the circle with the line through it for the worst way to possibly do it. Let me play through the beginning of this so you can see what it looks like, and then we'll walk backwards and I'll show you what I've done and how I've used Universe to make my job a lot easier. So if I stop right here, you've basically seen every effect that I've used in this entire video. I reused the same ones to keep it a consistent look throughout, and I just changed a few of the parameters here and there. I changed the text size, the graphic size, so that everything is uniform. Starting from the top, I do have this logo bug up in the right-hand corner, and it's got a gray bar, just a solid color behind it with some opacity, and that is going to be persistent throughout the entire track. But as you can see in the very beginning, it's not there, and then it flies in and appears up in the corner. So let me show you that effect. That is based off one of Universe's newest features called Logomotion, with apologies to Little Eva in the 1960s hit Locomotion. We have several options here. First, you choose the track that you want it to control. Of course, my title is on uh, track video track 6, so that's what I have to select here. And then there's presets. They have a great preset browser that makes choosing the preset very quick, but then you're not tied to it. You can easily modify it in the settings after the fact. So as you scroll over, it shows you very fast what it will look like. So there's all these different options. Most of them are kind of redundant. It's just changing the direction. But you'll see that the one I actually chose to use was the lower left bug pivot. And of course, I changed it from the lower left to being the upper right. Uh, it doesn't really matter where it is. It's just showing you how it will come on screen and go off screen. So I selected that by clicking on this and then choosing Select. But since I've already got it, I'm going to hit Cancel. And then you can choose to use the clip length, which will say, as long as this clip is on the track, it will fly in at the beginning for the duration that you set. And then at the end, wherever you stop it, like if I were to cut it, let's say right here, then it would automatically stop right here before it goes to the next clip. The other thing that there is in between the transition durations for coming in and off screen, there's an idle duration. This can be made to cause an idle animation to happen while it's on screen. So there's the transition on, which is what we saw before, where it's actually spinning up into space. And then there's the idle animation, which happens from here until it goes off screen. And then, of course, there's the transition back off, which is also controlled here. The idle animation can be selected under this dropdown. And I chose nothing because I didn't want that logo to be moving around up there and distracting from the text that users need to read down here, plus the action that's actually happening, happening on the video track in the background. Because they need to read the instruction, see the instruction, and nothing else. So the, the logo is just for branding, uh, for putting it on YouTube so people know where this video came from. But if I were to want to use any of those, uh, I liked Hover a lot because Hover just kind of makes it 
slowly bounce in place up and down. Of course, the parameters here are not set right, so it's going way too high and way too low. But you can easily adjust the speed at which it moves and then even the fine-tune the properties under where it starts and where it ends. So I would move the Y to a, a higher point so that it stays within this gray bar. And if it were too wide or something, I could adjust the x-axis as well. And then, of course, the scale, anchoring, and motion blur. If you want it to have some blur when it comes onto screen, you can turn that on, and it won't come in all nice and crisp. It'll ease onto screen with a natural-looking blur effect, which I chose to le leave off. But that's just an artistic decision I chose. All right, so that's the logo bug. I'm going to turn off that layer for now so it's not distracting. Next, I have all these color bars. As I said, I used three different color bars, but other than that, I just duplicated the same bar and changed the color and changed it its position where I needed to. For this, I actually used a transition called Slide, which is also in the universe set, and it has similar controls to the logo motion that we just looked at. You can choose the direction it comes from. To me, these seem kind of backwards because downwards actually comes from the bottom, but when I think downwards, I think it's moving downwards. It's actually moving upwards from the bottom. So upwards would, of course, be coming in from the top. As you can see there, that's where it is in this position. But it would fly in all the way from the top. And left and right, obviously, from the sides. The other thing I like is the ability to add blur to this. No blur, to me, looked fake. It was just too crisp. So I liked it on low. But if you want more blur, of course, you can put it up to medium or high depending on the speed and the distance that your graphic is traveling. I thought low was just right for me. And then finally there is using these little icons here. These I didn't want to be quite as static, so I added a, just a subtle move to them. That's my bottom layer here, the wrong symbol. Again, I used logo motion. I chose video track two because that's where the symbol is. And this graphic actually was much larger. Let me turn this off so you can see what it looks like. So there's the scale that it is uh, without Logo Motion's control on it. And again, keeping the unifying theme for the graphics, I chose a preset, the same one that I used for the logo to fly in, which was the upper left, uh, lower left bug pivot right here. I chose that, and then I actually turned on the hover graphic for this, and I adjusted the parameters so that, as you can see if I scrub through here, there's not really a whole lot of movement to it but it's just a little bit of a bounce to it, just to add some interest. All I did then was add the graphics for each of these following items on my timeline, and I copied and pasted the effects and just adjusted them a little bit for each one because each icon that I downloaded was a little bit different from the other, so I had to rescale them and things to make them all consistent. Now, flipping over to After Effects, I'm going to show you how Universe also works in After Effects for some of the same features, but there's some other features that would be most useful in After Effects, such as this new one, the HUD components. Let me show you how this works, because this will also save you a lot of time if you have to create some custom graphics that involve a lot of motion and a lot of complicated elements. I created a dark gray solid layer, and that is just something for me to apply this effect to, because it has to be applied to something, but you'll see that it's actually a graphic in and of itself. So right away, it's already put, put on the default preset. I'll show you there's a preset browser just like we saw in the logo motion effects in Premiere Pro. And you can see they've already built all these really cool little things uh, for whatever you can imagine. And every single parameter and piece of these is modifiable to your needs. I like this bling on graphics, so let's start with that and build off of it. Select it, and now it's in your timeline. And that's the solid layer is now turned into this. So that dark gray solid layer is almost like a null object in After Effects. It serves no purpose other than to have an effect applied to it. All right, so now there's four elements in this. As you can see, those would be that outer ring, the uh, triangular pieces, the center, and then there's kind of an inner ring about a third of the way out from the center. So each of those elements you can see has a different color. I can change those to whatever I want and they update in real time. I can adjust the opacity. So if I want something to show through it, I can. The animation can be changed with different presets here. We'll just change it to something crazy and see what it does. 
All right, now it's totally out of control, so we'll undo that. And let's move on to element two, which we can see is, okay, that's the outermost piece there. So I'm gonna change it to some other horrible color that doesn't match at all, just for fun. Then I'll adjust element three. And for element three, I'm actually gonna just change it to something else entirely. This looks cool. Select that and bam, now we have something entirely different. I can easily adjust the size of this object by just scaling it like any other object. Now, as you can see, after I added that, there's no animation on it, so I have to choose an animation here. We'll just make it a pulse scale that looks simple enough, and bam, there we go. So now it's pretty psychedelic. And the last feature I'm gonna show you from the new universe is the line tool that's available also. Along with logo motion and the HUD feature for After Effects, this line tool can be really useful, uh, especially for something like an overhead map or, or a topographical map where you're showing a route on screen for something. This line tool makes it really easy to create a road or an arrow that will follow your animation. Let me just show you how that works real quick. Again, I'm gonna use a solid gray layer, the same one I used on the HUD tool. Just adding that effect has already given it this particular arrow, whether you like it or not. You can change it to anything and then adjust from there. I'll make this dashed arrow because I like it a little better. And then of course you can change the color to something that's more to your liking. And this actually has a gradient on it, but I'll just make it all gray. And then the uh, head color, I'll leave yellow for now. Now, as you can see, it's not doing anything. It's just an arrow on screen. Okay, great, that didn't save me anything. But if you go under your animation settings, you can now have it draw on, and voila. It is now animating that arrow across its path. So as you can see, with a little bit of work and some graphics behind this of a particular direction, or if you're following something on screen, like a, you could change this graphic right here that's the arrowhead, you could change that to a little car that could be representative of whatever you're talking about in your production and that could show the travel of that car with the lines coming up behind it to show where it's come from. So these are a couple of features from the new universe set of plugins for Premiere Pro and After Effects. They're from Red Giant, and hopefully these tips will help you save a ton of time on your next animation project.